Mitch McConnell's reputation as a Senate tactician taking a hit after what a lot of people think are his miscalculations on health care. Here's how the New York Times describes the situation. Quote, he, McConnell, assumed that his conservative and moderate colleagues would come together to make good on their seven-year promise to repeal the health care law and quickly. But when he assembled a group of senators to cobble together a health care bill last month, he seemed to go out of his way to exclude some of the most knowledgeable members and moderate voices on health care. You may also be wondering what President Trump's role is in all of this. And according to Politico, it's not much. Quote, Trump told aides and McConnell that he wanted to be involved in whipping votes. And two administration officials said he enjoyed doing so in the House. But McConnell aides and advisors don't think Trump can help like he could in the House. Quote, Trump doesn't bring us any votes. He just doesn't, said one person familiar with the majority leader's thinking. For more, let's bring it to our panel. We're joined tonight by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. And on the other side of the table is Alan Sanders. He is a political science professor at St. Peter's University in Jersey City. And Professor, how surprised were you? Mitch McConnell's known as a guy who knows how to pull the levers and pull the strings in the Senate. Um, so when he targeted a vote for this coming Friday and then had to pull the bill, that's pretty out of character for Mitch McConnell. That is out of character, but I would point out that uh, Speaker Ryan said something very interesting. Never bet against Mitch McConnell. He's a very wily politician, a very strategic politician, and so one doesn't know for sure what he was up to. Of course, he could have made a mistake, and uh, every politician makes a mistake, and this could have been a very important one. But remember, the Republicans are still talking about the bill. He just simply pulled it off, uh, perhaps to figure out what, uh, what to do and to get more feedback from his colleagues. But the bill is not dead. The bill is simply off the floor for the moment. Well, I was going to ask, in a macro view, there's 52 Republicans in the Senate. They would all like to pass something that repeals and replaces Obamacare. It's just a matter of figuring out if they can agree on the details. But having everybody with that desire would seem to be half the battle. Well, that's right. But remember, Mitch McConnell sort of dug the party into this hole. For seven years, eight years, uh, the Republicans have been talking about repeal. Obamacare, never coming up with a real proposal. Only now do we have any kind of a proposal, and the proposals are being concocted under great secrecy. So you have to wonder about the overall strategy. Why rave and rant against a proposal, a bill, a law, uh, for which you really don't have a plan to replace? You know, Dominic, back in March when the House went through this and pulled its bill, it was all about Paul Ryan not being able to herd the kittens in mm -hmm. his caucus because mm -hmm. he couldn't... Did you expect that Mitch McConnell was going to have this kind of difficulty with the Senate? Yes, and the reason why, he may be very smart in terms of being the, the majority leader, but he's not Houdini. I mean, how do you get someone, how does the, the, the majority leader get a sitting U.S. senator to basically, uh, if you're a Susan Collins or a moderate, how do you get them to career, commit career suicide? How do you get them to do it? You, you uh, convince them that it's not career suicide, that they can still over, that, that it's, you can fight back or you can make the counter argument. Right, but, but there's one problem with that, with that argument. You're right, and historically that's what's been done. But we have something new nowadays called town hall meetings where uh, 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 elected officials go home to the district and voters give them an earful. And that's one of the reasons why McConnell was trying to push all of this through so fast this week. But as the professor said, and I, I agree with him, this is not over yet. So don't assume, I believe it's day, my personal opinion. But with McConnell, you must give him the benefit of the doubt that he might have something under, under his sleeve that we don't know about yet. I want to show everybody and go through the numbers that we have in terms of Americans' views on the, on the Senate bill and just how opposed to it most people seem to be. Uh, as we're looking through those numbers, Professor, we, this is a question that, that I got into with Rick Klein from ABC earlier, because, again, in the House version of all this, when the, when the Congress people went home and they went to all these town hall meetings and they got an earful in it, you know, how can they go against the, the will of their constituents? Then they came back to Washington and still passed the bill. I mean, how, how instrumental is public opinion when it comes to what these senators are going to do when it seemed like the House didn't really pay that much attention to it? Well, it's instrumental in the sense of whether it will help you get reelected. Don't forget that many of the Republicans are coming from gerrymandered districts, and in those gerrymandered districts, their position is popular or supportive. Senators are in a different situation. They represent large states, multi-ethnic uh, 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 populations, uh, economic diversity, racial, religious diversity. So for them, uh, voting for something that is unpopular uh, is more problematic because they have a more diverse population to appeal to. It, it, I almost can't believe I'm going to say this, but maybe the quietest person in this debate so far has been President Trump, at least on the Senate side. He's been very quiet, and they haven't really 
used him for much. And Professor, I'm, I'm wondering, at what point do you bring the president out? and start trying to either whip votes or, or make a more public appeal to try to get this thing home. Well, the president doesn't seem to have been very interested in the policy details of this uh, bill, or really uh, of any bill. Uh, he seems to be more interested in the trappings of the presidency, the speeches, the, the rallies, uh, the uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, the, 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 the basic uh, uh, surroundings mm -hmm. of the presidency. He's not really focused on the policy, and that's been a problem for the Republican Party. One would want a president to be active in the lobbying, in the deal-making, that is necessary to pass any law. This president doesn't seem to understand the trappings, the checks and balances, and uh, the rules of the games, basically. So what he's there to do is to be there for the photo ops. He was there for the photo op when the House passed mm -hmm. uh, the bill, but then, uh, but then that's about it. And I think for the Republican Party, this is a major problem. And you know, Andrew, I want to go back to one of your original points that you put out there and asking a question to the professor, in which, if I heard you correctly, you said, uh, they want to repeal and replace Obamacare, isn't that half the battle? You know, in other words, they should be united on that front They alone. know what they want to do, they just don't know how to do it. Okay, but they're not united on that because it's all a definition of how do you appeal and replace. You have more conservatives that are saying this is obama light. It's not, it's not going far enough. You have moderates saying you want me to commit career, career suicide if we make these cuts to Medicaid. And so you change, you tinker with the bill just a little bit more to appeal to conservatives, the moderates get upset. If you definitely tinker a little bit more towards the left or the moderates, the conservatives are gonna walk. So they can't even agree on the definition of replacing and appealing, and, uh, and appealing uh, Obamacare. Though I, I tend to think, Professor, that if push comes to shove, the conservatives would be more likely to fall in line and vote for a bill, swallow hard and, and m make a yes vote that they don't necessarily love, as opposed to moderates. The, 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 the conservatives are facing primaries potentially back home, whereas the moderates are facing general election threats. That's right, and I think the conservatives are more likely to fall into the line, and you saw that in the House. They were more likely to, to ultimately come around to, um, to the, uh, uh, bill, uh, the, the House bill. Uh, the moderates are the ones that are worried about general re-election, but that's very important because, remember, the Senate is uh, two or three votes away from shifting from Republican to Democratic, mm -hmm. and so for the Republican Party in the Senate, uh, voting the right way on the right bill is crucially important, and right now, uh, many senators don't know what is the right bill or the right way want to go back to President Trump and his role in all of this, and we've been talking for the last four or five months about he doesn't have any accomplishments other than getting Gorsuch on the bench. He really hasn't pulled anything off. And how important it is for the president to get a win. I think there may be another critical factor in all this for the president, which is the deal maker. He was elected to be the deal maker, Dominic, and he, that was his big selling point. If he can't close the deal on this, doesn't that, was, that undermine his entire... Of course it does. He was elected on that, but that was spin from his people. That was spin from his books. That was spin from the candidate himself. You, you asked the question about why Trump is not being rolled out to help further. Well, when you have a super PAC in, uh, in Nevada, running uh, commercials against, against uh, a vulnerable Republican mm -hmm. and incumbent uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. Heller. But Yes, but when, you, when you're running ads like that, what do you think that says to the other Republican senators? And like Susan Collins said, Senator Collins said, the president has not learned how the way, how to work with the Senate and how Washington works. This is your own that's making this comment. So what does that say? What does that say about your leadership skills? Forget about uh, his agenda, because uh, it seems like we went from a honeymoon period <laughs> to bad news for this president, one stumbling block after another. I think that honeymoon period lasted the afternoon of <laughs> January 20th, because then, then we got Spicer talking about the size of the crowds at the inauguration. <laughs> Professor, I'm curious, because the, the, the selling point, the image, it, it is spin, as Dominic pointed out, from his books and from his, from his campaign, but a lot of people think Donald Trump is this deal maker. And, well, and, and if, that, if his image is undermined because he can't make a deal, how dangerous is that for him? Well, it's ultimately very dangerous. I think you've already got people out uh, where he made a, a promise that carrier jobs would be brought back. It turns out that the carrier jobs that he promised are not going to mm -hmm. be brought back. And carrier has announced that it will move out. And in fact, got uh, benefits from, from the state uh, for moving out. Um, so I think a lot of people are having some second thoughts about his ability to be a deal maker. But remember, he was a business deal maker, not a political deal maker. And making deals in politics is very different. You can walk out, you can walk away from a bad deal in a business context and try to make a deal with another company, let's say, or another partner. 
in politics, you can never walk away because the people you uh, cannot make a deal with today are the very same people you're going to have to make a deal with tomorrow. So it's a different kind of deal making, and I don't think he understood that, and I don't think he understands that to this day. To, to save my life, I will never understand why. I know I've heard the argument that he wanted to deal with health care before getting to tax cuts. I will never understand why he took on such a polarizing issue of health care right out the gate. I just don't understand it, and so close to, to the midterm elections. I think the argument is that he could get a bigger tax cut and make them permanent if he got the savings from... Okay, but you, it, it's almost like a lawyer. Yeah. You only ask a question that yeah. you know the answer to. You don't jump out there out the window and not know that you can get this done. Could have said the same thing about President Obama. His first year was health care, too, and it cost him other things that he wanted to do as he went on. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go up to Albany so you don't have to. We're also going to check in on the special session that is happening right now. Lawmakers trying to cut some deals on important issues like control of the New York City school system. After the break, we'll speak with a lawmaker who is up there right now.